They sitting so far back that I can't even see them. You know something we hadn't done in a while? We hadn't changed up seats. So everybody that's sitting on this side tonight has to sit over here Sunday. Everybody on this side Sunday's got to sit over here. Swap. The ones in the middle's got to go upstairs. <laughs> ah. Good evening to the book of John tonight. I meant Revelations, I'm sorry. Chapter 11 of Revelations. Oh, 13. Y'all smart. I like y'all. Y'all smart. Let's finish up tonight in uh, Revelations. and uh, Of chapter 13, we'll finish up the second part of 13. And the false trinity, as we was introduced to the dragon, who we know is Satan. And then the, uh, the Antichrist, who is uh, the second part of the false trinity that Satan has set up. And then... Uh, tonight is the false prophet to be the third, third part of the trinity, the false trinity that it's set up uh, in Revelations uh, chapter 13. And we'll look at the, uh, the false prophet. Father, tonight as we go through this study, and we just ask for your guidance in this, God. Just open our minds and that, and that we'll be able to see, dear Father, uh, what it is, Satan's schemes. Uh, his plan, Father, the, the cool thing about all of this is, is you already give us Satan's plan. We already know what his schemes are, God. And just let us understand that, that, we, can, that we can illustrate this and demonstrate this in word, dear Father, telling to the lost people of this world what's coming, dear Father, in this uh, tribulation period. When the church has been uh, raptured out of here, God, and, and what's left behind and what's going to take place. God, let us have a clear understanding of all of this that's taking place, dear Father. Uh, we're seeing prophecy filled every day. And dear Father, as, as we go deeper and deeper in the, into the book of Revelations, God, we see uh, how close that we really feel that it's coming uh, to when this is all said and done. And God, we love you in the name of Jesus tonight. And all God's children says, Amen. Amen. As we go into this uh, third part tonight and look at the, at the false prophet, and, and, and God gives us warning, warnings about the false prophets, but uh, the, tonight is the, the Antichrist was the, was the uh, beast out of the land, coming out of the land, and tonight is the false prophet is the beast that's coming out of the sea. And in verse 1 it says, And I saw a beast coming out of the sea, and he had ten horns and seven heads, no, I'm sorry, I'm reading in chapter, verse 1. 11. See, I was halfway there. I had one and one. And the, then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. The Antichrist was coming out of the sea, and this is coming out of the earth. And he had two horns like the lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. The, then I saw another beast. And when the, the word another is meaning another one of the same kind. Something similar to what we just got through looking at as the beast that was coming uh, out of the sea of the Antichrist. This is something that resembles and, and it's, it's like the same thing, just of a, another. There was resemblance there. And as he came uh, up out of the earth, he had two horns uh, like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. And, and, the, and here, as we know that the dragon is Satan, who is the false trinity representing God. The Antichrist is the uh, false trinity who is coming representing Jesus. And then the false prophet is the false uh, trinity, a part of representing the Holy Spirit. And the beast who had, that came up uh, had these two horns like the lamb. And he gave, uh, this, this is giving the impression. He gives the impression uh, that it's so mental and it's mild and it's weak and it's, it's uh, just helpless. Uh, and it's so drawing to, uh, oh, I can't, oh, you're so precious, you're so pretty, you're, you're so innocent, you're so, you're so cuddly. But then when it speaks, it say it spoke and it and it spoke like a dragon. On the outward appearance, it will look like an innocent lamb. On the outside, it will look so innocent. It will look so drawing. But when it opens its mouth and goes to speak, it's gonna speak like a dragon. It's gonna it's gonna not have the same the, the lame. Have you ever seen, saw those people? You you talked with them just maybe two or three years or five years or ten years on the telephone. You know their voice. You know their voice. I mean, you know it just 
it don't matter what's going on or where, you know whenever they speak, you know them. But you've never seen them. And then when you do see them, nah, your voice don't go with you. <laughs> I mean, they might have a big old deep, deep bass, deep bass voice and and you picture them as being a, a, a Goliath giant. I mean, seven foot tall, uh, 400 pounds, just nothing but muscle. And then you see them, they're little bitty, itty weedy, teeny tiny somebody. They just don't go along with this voice. It's not going to go along with the outer appearance of what it's looking like here uh, with this lamb and the way this lamb's going to look. And, he, you know, he, this, this, this beast is going to have clever clever speech and gonna have it's it's gonna it's gonna have uh, clever lies and it's gonna easily be able to persuade people it's gonna be able to persuade people uh, in the direction that that it wants to persuade them you know and and, and God told us uh, in the word to to be aware of of false prophets false prophets I mean when you hear the word false we automatically our minds say okay this is not right in the book of Matthew in chapter 7 in verse 15 it says watch out for false prophets they come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are furious wolves so he give us this word many times way on back saying my goodness these false prophets you know false prophets has already been come there's already some false prophets coming. There's going to be some more to come. But he says, beware of these false prophets. Beware of them. They're going to, they're going to be so innocent looking. They're going to be so in, in it, see, in it, look so innocent, but they're, they're, they're going to be so fierce in their word, in the way that they, they conduct themselves and describe themselves with their voice. You know, every bit of this is, is, is Satan intimidating God, trying to... Uh, be like him, trying to, trying to do whatever he can to become and, and show that he was greater. That's, that's all Satan's tried to do from the very beginning is to be like God, trying to be just like him, just like him. And he's not going to stop until it goes on through and we get to that part. In verse 12, it says, He exercised all the authority of the first beast uh, on his behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast beast whose fatal wound had been healed the false prophet had the same power the false prophet's got the same power the exact power is what the antichrist has got and the, and the power of the antichrist and the power uh, of this false prophet is all coming from satan satan is fueling uh, this power satan is fueling uh, these uh, giving this authority and, and the holy spirit you know the holy spirit was coming it was sent down from heaven it was sent down, the Holy Spirit's coming out of heaven uh, to point man and, and, and to believing uh, into Jesus Christ. And here, that this false prophet is going to come to the point, the worship to the Antichrist. And that's where the false prophet, and, and every, you know, when it all comes back down to it, it's going to be nothing but man. It's going to be what Satan chose as in man to get man to do. And as he moves in this direction to take and guide everybody towards the worship of the Antichrist, to go and worship, uh, 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 go and worship the, the Satan himself, and go into worship this false Trinity, the false part uh, that's not going. It's not going to be pleasant as we done read and, and know that many other things is coming and all the things that's going on uh, during this uh, time of uh, uh, the last part of three and a half years of the tribulation. And the, the whole purpose of the, of the uh, false prophet is to direct and make people worship. Make people worship the Antichrist. And the Antichrist, uh, you remember back when we read here uh, just a few weeks ago, it, it, uh, it looked like it had an injury. There was an injury that it looked like it had, and then it was healed, and it came back to life, and representing, uh, trying to representing and do the replica of our Savior Jesus, who, who had the injury, had the sword injury in the side uh, from there, and dying on the cross, and then going to the grave, and rose from the grave, and came back to life because God gave life. And we got to remember, life will only come by God. Life will only be given out by God. Don't care what Satan does, but you know, during this time, the whole entire time of all of this, uh, when the Antichrist comes and the, and the false prophets come, this will be the closest that Satan has ever come to being like God. 
This will be the closest that mankind has ever come to try to be like God. But it's all going to be shot down. Because it just can't work. Because life comes from God and God only. Uh, and here it was that this Antichrist had a bad injury and it seemed to have died. But then it came to live again. Uh, the same, replicating the same thing as what, what our Savior Jesus had done. And then verse 13 it says, And he performed great and miraculous signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth in full view of man. The false prophet is going to do all kinds of magical tricks. You know, man is just fascinated with magic. We, we, we're so fascinated with magic. I mean, people are on the streets and everywhere, on TV, they, you know, magicians, and, and they're, doing all these, they're doing all these tricks, and, and, and they even make these tricks that uh, some doing cards and, and taking... Uh, Pieces of wire and moving pieces of wire in and out of one another and uh, make it look like some kind of illusion and, and making airplanes disappear. And there's millions and billions of dollars that's made because of, of what seems to be magic. And we're drawn to that. We love to, we love to look magical and do, uh, I can't believe they did that. You know, I think I'm going to point my finger at that chair and make it rise up. And what would y'all do? Some of y'all say, that's the devil. That's the devil. Not as some of y'all say, Rex, if you can point your finger at that chair and make it rise up, how about pointing your finger at my checkbook and fill it up? Because <laughs> it's Christmas time. <laughs> But we're drawn to magic, and, and you know, Satan, Satan tries to make out. Even when they was up on the mount, and all the the, the uh, magic men come to try to call the fire down out of heaven, and 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 it, you know, it it just didn't work. But there ain't nothing magical about it, because you know, God don't do magic. God does miracles. God performs the real thing. God does the real thing. It ain't something fake. And, and if God, if you're healed, you can rest for sure. There ain't no magic about it. It's just a miracle straight out of the grace of God that he puts on mine in your life. And, and so we got to, we, we'll, during this time, there's going to be a lot of magical things that appear. And the, the, these, uh, these things that comes down is they cause the fire out of the skies. And, you know, they've done this publicly so everybody could see. So everybody could see it. He calls it down. It says, and he performed great and miraculous signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven on earth in full view of man because man's going to be drawn to it. I can't believe it. Man, this is happening. This is going, man, this is, this, this is the dude right here. This guy is A-okay. I'm going to hang out with him. Goes, man, he's just got it going on. You know, in chapter 11, God sent the two spies. He sent the two spies, who was Moses, what we claim to be Moses and Elijah, uh, who had power to uh, throw fire out from their mouth. And, and Elijah even had the power as he was up on the mount. And he did call the fire down because it was God sending it down. It had nothing to do with any, uh, performing any kind of magic. It was just straight out of God and God's heaven and mine and your kingdom that we'll have one day is where it fell from. And so in verse 14 as we move along, because of the signs he was giving power to do on, ha on behalf of the first beast, because of the signs he was giving power to do, and again that power is coming from Satan. Satan is, uh, is giving this and, and showing all of these great things. He used this power uh, to benefit the Antichrist. Because he's pointing everybody to go towards the Antichrist, to go towards the uh, replication of, of Jesus. Because the Antichrist is representing what we, uh, about Jesus being on the cross and dying and coming back to life. So that's the Antichrist is going, everybody, uh, the pro, uh, false prophets directing everybody to go that way and to be just amazed at the, at the Antichrist. To be amazed at, at what he's got uh, set up in store. Uh, and the people's going to believe these lies. They're going to believe these uh, magical tricks. I mean, they're going to, no, that's for real. No, no, that, you just, no, that, that, that was for real. That, that really happened. Yeah, that, that really happened. Like the illusion of, uh, uh, they showed it, the airplane is sitting out there, and then all of a sudden they pull the curtain and the airplane's gone. Man, that's for real. No, that airplane wasn't there to begin with. <laughs> 
No, it was, uh, there's some great things that's going to happen. Magicians are doing all these things. But you know what? It says those who trust God uh, did not believe the false prophet. They're the, uh, they're the ones. They're the ones that's going to see some things as well. And the false prophet uh, told the people to make an image of the Antichrist. In verse 14, because of the signs and the powers given to be on behalf of the first beast, he, decide, uh, he deceived the inhabitants uh, of the earth. He ordered them to set up an image in honor of of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. Going back again, trying to recreate all of what happened during the beginning whenever Jesus went to the cross, died, went to the tomb, and rose from the tomb and went to the Father. And here it is again that Satan is trying to set this all up. You know, God can do it. I can do it too. God did it. I got it. I can do it. He's no more. He's, he's, he's nothing more. There ain't nothing to him. He's, I'm just as much as God is. And all these people is going to go to believing, go to believing, go to believing. You know how, I mean, all that's taken place up to this point, all that, the, all that has happened, all that's going on, we say, well, how in the world? How in the world do these people not get it and see that, that Satan is false and they ain't nothing to him? And, and why don't they just believe God and his son Jesus? Well, look what's going on in our world today. Why can't people get it today? Why in the world can't they get it right now? Why does not people understand that, my goodness, if you ain't got Jesus, that you go into the pits of hell? Uh, it's, but you know, people's people. People or people. And the false prophet has told the people to make this image of the Antichrist, and the people obeyed him. They will obey. They're going to obey uh, uh, the words of the false prophet. They're going to obey the words of the Antichrist, and they're going to do exactly. And they made the image just like the first beast. They made the image of, they made the, image, uh, uh, of the Antichrist, and they worshiped that Antichrist, and they worshiped uh, that, uh, that image that they made. It's just going to be terrible. And in verse 15, he was giving power to give breath to the image of the first beast, beast so that it could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. He was given. He was giving power again. He was giving power again, fueling back. In other words, the, the man that is chosen to be the false prophet Satan's going to empower and give that power and empower him to do these things. The false prophet, after leading the people to build this image, this is what's happened after the false prophet uh, leading the people to go in to build this image of the Antichrist is going to perform some more miracles, going to perform some more miraculous signs that's going to be right in front of everybody. And the, and the thing that, that he's going to try now to replicate again is where our Savior Jesus was in the tomb. He was in the tomb. And, and, and he came up out of that tomb and went, and here it is that, that this, this is what's happening now, is he's going to try to do the same thing. He's going to show this, and this image, and he's going to show, he says that, that he was giving power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that it could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. So this, 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 uh, this Antichrist who had the wound, that had the wound of the sword and life to come back and going to try, he's going to replicate life coming back into, life coming back in. So Satan's going to say, I got power to give life back. But you remember back over in chapter, uh, uh, was it chapter 11? I think it was chapter, where, where the, the two witnesses that he sent Moses and Elijah, the two witnesses to come back and, and they were, uh, brought and put breath back into them, put breath back in uh, to what? Uh, God, God is the only one that can put the breath back in. God is the only one that can, can show this. And this is just Satan's attempt to imitate God. It's just his simple uh, a part of his life that he's going to try to imitate God. Uh, back in the creation, back in the very beginning in the creation, when God created me and you, 
God created me and you, and, and he reached down into the dust and, and took the dust and formed the silhouette, and God blowed the life. It wasn't Satan that blowed the life. It was God. God is the only one that can blow life back into man. God is the only one that can do this. During the tribulation period, God breathed the breath back into the two witnesses and rose them back. So Satan's got to do everything he can to try to replicate everything that God God does you know I you know we're we're very techno uh, very uh, techno te- what's that say it somebody technology yeah we got a lot of technology today y'all very technical but you know the technology of today is not reached the limits of where it's even going. There's so many things that's happening today. There's so many things that's going on in today and, and with technology that I just can't help but think. Because Satan, now this is my mind just running a little bit. Y'all don't mind, y'all bear with me just a little bit now on, on this, because this is this is I'm not saying this is in scripture. This is just my mind thinking. I got the right to think it just a second, don't I? But I with with just think about robots just think about robots and i think about you know they got eyes they they've created eyes robotic eyes we got the robotic limbs the arms feet legs uh they got all kind of robotic stuff, and I mean, it's not even begin to to be what it's going to be. And I just think about, I just think about this antichrist. I think about what you know, the the false prophet. I think about all of this that's coming up, and, and that people, especially with with the especially with Satan trying to say that he's rose this antichrist or that he's rosed up this life that that he's put life back into. You know, I, I just wonder if if robots is not going to play into this because it looks like to the visual eyes to man that it, you know they even make in skin they even make skin so it, it, to see that that a person has got new skin on them and, and everything about them is well there is that person laying dead and then there's somebody over here punching a button to make them get up and there's somebody with a joystick to make them stand up and there's some uh, with a joystick to make them talk you know they're using robotic stuff they're using all these things not only to make uh, limbs but even to for people to speak i mean there's all sorts of things that's going on and with the technology that we have today is not even begin to see and we'll, we're going to get into a little bit more about the technology as we get towards verse 18 but it doesn't matter what it is or who he's choosing. There's one thing for sure. It's false. It's false. It, it's not true life. It is not true life unless God put the life in it. If God put the life in it, you can rest for sure that that's true. But if God ain't in it, just cast it and throw it away. Don't go to the bank and cash that in because they're going to lock you up for having counterfeit. Justin's going to come get you. After he tases you about five times. <laughs> In other words, what he's going to do, <laughs> he's going to burn up your circuit board. <laughs> Verse 16. Verse 16. He also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead. Boy, this is causing a lot of controversy today, ain't it? This is some controversy going on today. But you know what, church? This is for real. This is happening right now as we speak. This is happening right now. This is going on. The false prophet will cause all the followers of the Antichrist to receive the mark or the stamp or impression. The Antichrist is going to give everyone a number, which is going to include his own number. 666. Here with the 666, the mark will be placed either on the hand or the forehead. Now, what's the most two visible, visible areas of the body when you're walking towards somebody? You want to identify somebody, what's the two visible areas? You always see the back of the hand and you always see the forehead. The two most visible areas when you're approaching somebody 
you know, we just, we just didn't come up and think about this in the last few years or the last decade. God thought about this kind of stuff. He, he's seen this coming thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. Thousands, you know, they ain't, anybody going to put no mark on me. But you see, the thing is, is the Antichrist and the false prophet are so crafty. They, their language is so uh, enticing. Their language is so pleasant and clever. No, go ask Eve. Go ask Eve how, ask Eve how clever, how clever Satan is and how clever. Ask Adam how, not this Adam. <laughs> Y'all leave this Adam alone. I said Adam and Eve, not Adam and Nikki. <laughs> Go ask Adam and Eve how clever Satan is because he come in there. Oh, me. I, y'all, men, y'all don't even think that. When them women go to goo-goo in them eyes, flickering them eyes, I sure would like a chocolate-dipped ice cream, Rex. <laughs> All right, we'll drive 50 miles to get you a chocolate-dipped ice cream. Oh, my goodness. A lot of things that's going to happen. A lot of things going to take place. A lot of things that's going to that's be done falsely because we're in a false time. We're dealing with a false prophet. Uh, we're dealing with a, a false antichrist. We're dealing with a false trinity that's going on here. And, and, and the antichrist is going to give everyone that number. And the mark is going to be placed on the hand or the forehead. And these are the two most visible areas of the body. Uh, and we... you know. We have that ability today. It's being done. It's being tested. It's being done right now. Now, I, I, I was doing a lot of study, and there's a lot of, uh, when I was studying this, and there's a lot of different things about, about the chips and about all this stuff that's coming to take place. Uh, and some of it, you don't know what to believe of it. You don't, you know, everything on the Internet is not uh, true. So you don't know what studies, you don't know, uh, really and truly what these different videos and things it's pointing at. But anyway, the, the, it's, the, the capability is here and it's already being used in, in different forms. It's already being, you know, just think, let's go on to verse 17. Let's go on to verse 17 right quick before I get ahead of myself. So that uh, no one could buy, sell unless he had the mark, which is the same as the beast of the number of his name. So to get in the mark... And getting a mark, in other words, if you don't have the mark, you're not going to be able to buy, you're not going to be able to sell, and you're not going to be able to trade. You're not going to be able to, to you're not going to be able to be functional uh, in, in, the, in the time of this tribulation period. You're not going to be able to function if you don't have this number. Well, I just, just, just die. Okay, well, there's going to be some that's going to choose that because they're going to say, I believe in God. I'm not going to, I'm not going to not believe in God. Just let me die if I got to die. But then there's a lot that's going to say, Oh, there ain't nothing to that. It's, it's fine. It's okay. The purpose of the mark is to trap people. The purpose of this mark is to trap people into believing and trusting uh, uh, in the Antichrist. And if you don't have that mark, you're not going to be functional. You're not going to do. You know what? If you don't receive the mark, you're going to be considered a traitor. If you don't have this mark, you're going to be considered an outsider. If you don't have this mark, you're going to either be killed or you're going to be just left for dead. Because you're not going to be functional during this time. You got to have this mark. This mark is going to be. It's going to be like your watch. How many of you feel naked if you don't have your watch on? I mean, it's a part of you. How many? If you don't have your wallet, if you don't have your pocketbook, if you don't have the dynamite in your pocketbook, uh, if you don't have your pistol, if you don't have your taser, <laughs> you know. Well, I can tell you one of the worst feelings you can have as a law enforcement officer, and that is to leave home all dressed. And you get to work, and you get in your patrol car, and you get out here on the street, and and you come go to your first call, and it's a family violence, and you got a husband and wife, and husband doesn't come outside with a gun, and you reach for your gun, and you got an empty holster because you left it at home on the dresser. Whoo! That ain't happened to you, has it, Justin? <laughs> I did that one day. Boy, that's a that's an empty feeling. Well, you know, if you don't have this mark, it's just going. to... You're just not going to be functional. And in verse 18, it says, and this calls for wisdom. If anyone has insight, let him calculate the number. If he has the insight, let him calculate the number of the beast, for it is man's number. His number is 666. This is a warning to God. This is God saying, hey, (laughs) 
wait a minute, y'all better consider what's going to happen. You better just think about before you let them put that number on your forehead or you let them put that chip in your body, you need to, you need to, uh, you need to think about this. You need to use a little wisdom here. You need to be a little wise here. You need to think about what's happening, what's going on. You need to look around and see. You need to just wake up, you coconut head. You need to wake up. Here, God is giving the warning. He said, this calls for wisdom. You should stop and think about this number. Well, you know, people in the Bible... Uh, People's going people's gonna to be so eager to get this. Oh, yeah, this is, man, this is another cool gadget. I, hey, I, they can put a chip in my, finger, in my hand or on my forehead, and, you know, I can just zip through the grocery line. I, I, I mean, time, all I got, I ain't even got to dig in my wallet and pull out no money. I can walk up to the cash register, put my hand under there and let it scan it, and, man, I'm out the door. I, I can go buy, I can go do these things, and, and these things is what's coming and what's taking place and what's going on. This is the technology is out here today they already you know they you know, the first words that I heard uh, uh, the first words that I heard about placing the chip in in the human body in, in under the skin in, in the shoulder or whatever it's all using for the GPS technology that's the first times I heard about it and they already have experimented into rapists and child molesters child molesters and that's where they began with all of this technology is putting that in there so you know they can free they can take child molesters and they can take uh, people who's been considered child molester they can take somebody who's been considered a, a sex crime of rape or whatever and they put that chip in there and and they can go about their merry way and and, and the satellites uh, uh, pick up that signal and they'll know wherever Everybody's at it at any given time. Well, you know what? If you got a car that's technology today, if you if you if your car has got fuel injection instead of a carburetor, there's technology in those vehicles that they know everything. They, they, these vehicles that you buy today, they, they, they got so much technology in there that they know when you smash your brakes. <laughs> They know how fast you're running. They know the speed of the impact or estimated speed of the impact. We're being kept up with today. Anybody got a cell phone? You're being kept up with. <laughs> every text message that you send, every phone conversation that you have, well, ain't nobody listening Every phone conversation, every word that you speak, is, and every text message is kept in a database. It's in a database somewhere. The only way that you can't be seen, I reckon it's go under dirt. Well, you know what? That ain't so either. <laughs> they got this sonar equipment now that can... Look under the dirt. They can, you can't get away. Not get away. In the Bible, the number six is representing mankind. Is representing man. Look at in the six, six. You know, on the sixth day, God created what? Mankind. <laughs> God created mankind on the sixth day. But look at the false trinity in the number three. There's three sixes. Six, 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 one, two, three. The false trinity of Satan setting up of the threes. Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. All of this is lining up and setting up to what people is going to be so eager. Oh, that's cool. Man, uh, you know, hey, uh, put these gadgets under my hand and in my forehead or whatever, and, and you'll, you'll have that. If you go to the supermarket and, and buy something, you're going to have that. That's the only way you're going to be able to pay. That's the only way you'll be able to sell anything. Church, do we see this kind of stuff lining up today? Is this stuff lining up today? They're already using this technology. Technology is already, already being put in place, put in place, put in place. I don't know this for sure. I don't know this for sure. 
but it was something that I was reading today and I haven't read, don't know much about it at all, but with all, and not getting off on the Obamacare by no means, but, but they tell me in different things that I've read and they go to point to these pages and this page and that page, but I don't know, maybe somebody wants to go and research that out, that this chip is being placed in the Obamacare. It's in there deep inside of it, somewhere inside of this, this law that's coming out that mankind is going to get the chill to keep your insurance. And they're calling it the chill. And you know what else they say? Let me see if I can get this right. Something to do with if you're already at a certain age that you will have the option to opt out, but the new children that the the children of coming up of whatever were born at a certain time for them to have insurance uh, is going to have to have the chip and it's called chip it's called children's how is it what, let me see what was it chip uh, children's health insurance plan children's health insurance plan that spells chip don't it <laughs> children's health insurance plan you see this stuff is already it's already piling up it's already happening it's already coming in to take and be in the place people is going to be so eager to fall for this trap man this is cool this is cool hey I, yeah it saves Hey, I, I, I'll never be lost. I can have that chip, and if I'm hiking on the Appalachian Trail, they'll, they'll find me. If I'm hiking on the Appalachian Trail and, and I get lost, uh, you know, they've got this chip, and they can beam down and find out where I'm at. I'll never be lost. There's going to be all kind of schemes. There's going to be all kind of contraptions. There's going to be all kind of craftiness that's put into this that's going to entice mankind to buy into it, to buy into it. And if I ever tell you anything, don't buy into a false prophet and his schemes. Don't buy into this stuff. Don't buy into this stuff. But there's going to be so, so, so many that's going to be so drawn by it because it's so cool. I, you know, we're the world's worst. Now, we are, y'all can admit or not, but all y'all gadget freaks out there, not me, I'm not a gadget freak. I just like everything that comes out new. <laughs> all these new gadgets that's coming out, and man, boy, we like them. They come out with an iPhone 4. Boy, we take off and go get an iPhone 4. They come out with a, next week they come out with an iPhone 4S. And it's got one other little option on it that's better. Throw that in the trash. I'm going me a 4S. <laughs> they come out next year with something else or whatever. You know, it's, it's just on technology is going to play a huge part in the last three and a half years of tribulation. It's going to take it. Technology is going to play into it. Technology is going to play into it. Having this barcode, this stamp, this impression that you're already going, only going to have. You know, back in the days of Moses and Elijah, when they was, you know, I, I wonder if they, well, what kind of markings are they talking about? What kind of, what kind of impressions, you know, I, I, back then all they had was a, a jawbone of a donkey to fight with. <laughs> they didn't have, they didn't have uh, Uzis and AK-47s, I mean, they, they didn't have the technology. To, and I'm, I'm, I would wonder what Moses was thinking about whenever he was thinking about, well, they was going, man, they're going to be all this markings in the end times. Boy, I wonder what all that is. <laughs> you see, we're seeing it today. They didn't see it. But we are seeing it today. Matter of fact, we're fixing to live it. Because it's fixing to happen. I just... Wouldn't surprise me if we, all Christians didn't end up in heaven in the morning. Would not surprise at all, at all. And if y'all want to come, let's close out with a, with a song right quick. The markings that's going to be placed and all of this stuff that's taking place about the, the end times and these markings and how you're going to be able to buy, sell. If you don't have this marking, if this marking is coming, the 
form of a chip uh, to be under the skin of the forehead or on the back of the hand or whatever. You know, I mean, the, the, the technology, everything is here. Everything is taking place. But rest for sure tonight to know that the true Trinity is God, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's the true Trinity. It's not Satan, Antichrist, and the false prophet. That's a false, false Trinity. The true Trinity is God, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. That's it. That's where we, that's where we stand tonight. That's what we believe. That's what we trust in. But there's going to be so many to buy into it because it's going to sound so clever. Tonight, I want us to continue to do what we've been doing on Wednesday nights. If you know somebody, if you got somebody in your heart, somebody on your mind that you knew that if God come back tonight, that by the way that they live their life and by the way that they profess, that they would not make it to the kingdom. I want you to come to this altar and I want you to pray for them. If we ever need to be praying for our fellow man, fellow brother, fellow sister. It's right now. It's at this time. It's at this very time. In the name of Jesus.